Hello, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And a couple of weeks ago, I found this behemoth, this monster, this beauty, okay, beautiful. This is my old laptop that I had from when I started college way back in 2010 uh, and through several of my corporate years. And now I'm planning to recycle this computer, okay? Um, it's it has to be plugged in now, it barely operates. Um, but as I was powering it on the other day, I realized that I didn't know if I had transferred all of my important documents. In fact, I found several important documents. <sighs> also, look at all these NaNoWriMo stickers. Now these stories were back from when I had no plans of publication. They were just fun. They were just for me. I have always wanted to be a writer and it's, my, it's been my dream for ages to be a published author. But back when I was writing these stories, you know, I hadn't done any research into that. I just knew that I needed to write and I liked doing it. And it's funny because I don't really think I remember me. <laughs> I shared on my Instagram stories when I found this computer and as I was going through the process of trying to like transfer all the documents and save them, I found like four or five Scribner files from different NaNoWriMo's. Could not tell you, could not tell you what those stories were. In fact, I did open one and was like, holy shit, I remember. Um, but I figured now would be fun to go over them with you on camera and see what we find. <laughs> uh, but we don't need this anymore, so. <laughs> the other thing to be noted, besides the, the cutest little pepperoni duke is in here with me, is that I currently have my new computer set up, but I haven't yet downloaded Scribner on it. So we are going to use the old computer, not the ancient computer, but the old computer that I've had set up so that I can use my desk <laughs> and try and open the documents here. Basically what I did is I spent a couple hours, and by that I mean I dragged and dropped for like two minutes and then it took hours to upload into my Google Drive. And so I'm hoping uh, that it will open, that it will work. Old college laptop. So these are the ones that I'd already pulled out. I want to tell you about this one. <laughs> Everyone was silent at George Mason Correctional Institute. Everything was always quiet at five in the morning when all the young inmates had just gotten to sleep a few hours earlier and had but another half hour to enjoy their dreams. That, James decided, was the mistake the guards had made. <laughs> I still love the premise of this story. It's so funny what you remember as soon as you read the first lines of it. Like you almost place yourself back to when you were drafting it. This was back at like, you know, peak dystopian. <laughs> and I still love it. It's set in a near future US where the US has kind of fractured off. You know, you have the Northeast, the Vermont, the New Hampshire, Maine that have fractured together. You have California and like maybe even up to Washington that have fractured off together. Debatably like part of California has fractured itself. Texas has fractured off, that kind of thing. And in one of the Northeasty places, what they do is they have these correctional institutes. So when you make a mistake or break a law or anything like that, you are rehabilitated. But the rehabilitation process you're taking these pills every day and you're learning what you did wrong of sorts. Um, but basically the ultimate hope is that you've been rehabilitated enough internally that you'll also forget what you've done so that when you're placed back out into the world, you're fine. You are now an upstanding citizen. It should never happen again. James went to find his sister who had been lost and the switcheroo here is that James, in attempting to do that, got lost and forgot himself in the process. So someone has to come and get James. James, of course, was of some interest, I think, to the Pacific Northwest. Like he was the son of the general or the commander or the lad. I, I don't really know. It really falls apart, actually, once they get out of the Correctional Institute, which I think is very telling of a lot of dystopian at the time, too. As soon as the, like, cool problem thing was solved, I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck to do with this. So of course, <laughs> when I was brainstorming like a second book, I was like, well, here's the thing. They have to go back. Yes, of course they do. Of course they have to go back. Anyways, <laughs> I just want you to see that I wrote 88 pages, 88 single spaced pages of this story. What, how many words is that in total? Not that it matters. I have a docx. 
we'll see if Chrome opens it. Probably won't. That's what I was afraid of. So I'm glad I saved a PDF. All right. Let's see if I can find. Look at this. Camp Nano 13, Nano 12, Superhero Scriv. That would have been the first one that I was working on when I first started my author tube channel. The Shadow, okay, we'll have to talk about that, which I will never get over. I had Nano 13, Nano 12, Camp Nano 13, Shadow Hunter Superhero, and Scrivener Files. So let's see if I can download. Oh my God. Huh. Oh no, what if I can't download it? Find her back up, docs. What the fuck? What are you? I'm viewing an extension page. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, what the fuckity fuck is this? <laughs> Should I have prepared better for this video? Yes. Will this ultimately be more fun? I guess. We're going on an adventure. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to try and turn the mammoth back on. Where did I put it? We're gonna try and turn the mammoth back on. <laughs> no. Transfer all of them to PDFs and then save them again. Yes, that has to be it. I swear, someone in the comments is gonna know how to do this the easy way, but we're not in the comments right now. So. And for my own purposes, since I think it would be fun, I'm gonna set a timer on this and see how long it takes, just for the funsies. to turn on how the feeling. Oh, hi, Buffy. This entire thing is going to be a process. So I'm going to open up the Shadow Hunters script first so I can tell you about the Shadow Hunters. I only vaguely remember this project. Oh, look at this. So I think I created the file 2013 and last modified it 2014. So when I made this, obviously Cassandra Clare had already um, created her book the shadow hunters or her series the shadow hunters right but i had not read it yet and did not know anything about it so i made this thing oh ancient scrivener look at you okay there's too many issues popping up look at this because this is uh scrivener for windows Look at that. Oh my god. Oh, okay. We're still just gonna, we're gonna circle for a bit. It's fine. We're circling. We're circling. We're still circling. I'm gonna finish making coffee and telling you about the Shadow Hunters. <laughs> so, my version of the Shadow Hunters was actually born from a short story that I wrote. When I was at college, I started this organization called the Creative Writers of Aggieland, and um, we would bring, you know, little snippets of those stories we were working on, or like a new story or a short story up to a certain amount of words, and we would critique them and work on them and kind of workshop it together. I think the organization is still going on, which is so cool, and I'm pretty sure they've made improvements to it and everything, so that's awesome. But I took in this idea where this character can see the shadows. That's what they're called. After someone immediately dies, you have a shadow state. And she was a shadow hunter. And I, when I found out about Cassandra Flair's shadow hunters, I was so upset because hers aren't even like necessarily shadows. <laughs> Mine was a much more literal take on shadow hunter. But anyways, it's actually evolved in my mind, which is really fun. So that now I have it paired with an adult story about death that I had written a little bit in and it's significantly better than it ever would have been being my version of Shadow Hunters. Um, but anyways. I came back and it was gone. Look, I don't want you McAfee. I didn't want you then, I don't want you now. It's not even here anymore. What happened? Project? <laughs> Please open. <laughs> oh no. So what you do is compile custom PDF. That's what I did. I used to do it. Ah, the Shadow Hunter. Okay, let's see. Oh, this one was only 18 pages. Let's see, the entire draft. 
Look at this old corkboard style. I wonder if the window still looks like that. Yeah, the entire draft is 15,000 words. So I guess that probably is 18 pages, right? Oh, okay. So the last thing it had was scene nine. It did not do my love, lo uh, lost love theme. Oh, death was standing in front of me. I love this story. I will return to this story. <laughs> Y'all know I love a good death personified. Or godified. Deified. Yes, that's the word. Gosh, you can hear how loud it's trying to work. So now, boop. Now I will file. <laughs> and compile. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so this one, like the last one, I had chapter headings, but like, I didn't ever write anything other than the opening. But it was Camp Nano 13, which is the first year that I was working corporate, and I, yeah, that makes so much sense to me. You know, you know what's funny is I'm almost 99% sure I won this year, but I Obviously there's only three chapters here, so I don't know if I saved this in different spots. Yeah, so I wrote all of this actually in Word, my Nano 12. So zero draft, zero draft plus, zero draft plus rewrite. Oh, look at this. I made myself a little writing calendar for things I needed to get done. Combine scene one and two into an opening chapter, rewrite dream sequence, add scene with Jenny, read it over one final time before sending out to people. <laughs> When you get to the internet that it doesn't want to go fast <laughs> or at all. Okay, as you can see, it is quite a bit colder, so I put a sweater over my other top and I've switched out my coffee for some beer couple things I have noticed. I use the name James as like a substitute name. I found James in, not only was he a main character in some stories, but he was a minor character. Not the same character, I just used the name James that many times. It's like my MC or capital MMC <laughs> that I use nowadays. It is fun to see how long I've used the zero draft thing, but also like Man, oh man, this is really making me reflect back because so many of these stories are still stories that I love, but it took me years to take that shadow hunter idea and pair it with the adult death story concept I have. And then for it to, it sat in my brain like that for years. So to see them separated out was crazy. Also, I loved my folder just called ideas where I would have a different word document with like one or two phrases each. A uh, special shout out to Soul Sucker Plan. <laughs> no idea what the rest of the novel is going to be, what the plot would be, but the concept. Death's not a bad guy. Sin. Now Sin is a bad guy. Where was I going with that? I don't know. I still like it. That's actually been the big thing. None of these genres that I had started writing are genres that I wouldn't write now. There was a lot more like urban fantasy kind of stuff, which I still love with my whole heart. I would take any of those concepts today and I would write them again. And actually, <laughs> It is really fun to see rereading some of it. It's very clearly more amateur writing than what I can do now. So it's nice to note the improvement, but obviously at the time I didn't feel like it was as amateur as when I'm looking at it now, I see it clearly as that. So it kind of like brings up some Yay, I've grown, but also some insecurities because I'm sure in the future, in 10 years time, I'm gonna look back and feel the same way. But that's also the great side of being a writer and being in this path and having this hobby and this passion that you can do all the time. We have all our lives to continue to get better at this thing that we love so much. And there's just something so freaking cool about that. Also, some of these stories, I don't remember much of at all. Like I vaguely, I don't remember the plot of some of them. I don't know. The start of this one is someone shoved into me, knocking the bag of potions out of my hand. I groaned and whipped my head back to find whoever they were, but too many people had already passed by. Hundreds of people were shuffling by me in the main square as I bent down to pick up the sack. 
Just as it was back in my hand and wrapped around my shoulders, someone else knocked it off. Really? I shouted to some unknown person. A few people away, Avada Noel turned back and winked at me. Figured. Who are these people? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do remember having this story with the old man who comes up like two paragraphs later. This story also has a James because of course it does. <laughs> And the way that this chapter, I guess, leaves off is tomorrow I'd leave. Tomorrow I'd stop thinking and start doing. Tomorrow I'd start my search for Myra. I think Myra was the sister, but like, genuinely, don't remember much. It's funny how certain stories stick with us more. Could not tell you anything else about this one. I would have to read all of it and I have all of it in parts. <laughs> but I also have the start of my superhero story. <laughs> The one that I was first working on when I started the channel and I actually had called it curse on my old computer. I didn't realize I'd started it this early. I didn't realize I'd been working on it. I think this is actually the only story that I managed to even get a decent way through 79 pages through while I was at my corporate job. I've talked before about how that was just a rough time for me period but also just writing wise you know but I stuck through it with this one story and I'm telling you, I have such a love for the evolution of this story because the way it starts off is totally different here. Like she's talking to the cops at the intro where she completely avoids the cops in the version I have. Now the inciting incident is still similar, but just certain things, certain personality aspects were changed completely. The dad's playing a role in here and he doesn't really in the new, in the current version, not even new version. I haven't worked on it in ages. Fascinating. Fascinating. I think this also speaks to just how many ideas I have. I've always said I have a plethora of ideas, um, but it's nice to see that even though I had so many ideas, obviously there's a funnel for how many you can actually work on at any one time. So it's fun to me to talk to other people because I know several people who are like me and then several people who only get their idea as they're wrapping up their old one. And they're always worried about having an idea. And I had never felt this way before until I've been in this mode of trying to revise stuff and just finish a lot of things. And I have had story ideas here and there, but the fact that I'm able to be, like I've been dedicated into getting the work finished um, is a change for me. Usually I have one new thing that I'm working on at least, and that ends up dominating my time. So I think I've just, this is an evolution. I've gotten just a teensy bit better. Um, but because of that, because I don't have anything new that wasn't planned or scheduled that I'm working on, there was some sort of fear that I'd never experienced before that I wouldn't know what to do when I finally got back around. Would I be met with this like hesitancy? But I have all these stories that I would still write again. <laughs> I have all these stories that I think I would revisit and that I would do so much better and that's gonna be super fun. Also the list of story ideas that I've had, so much longer now. I have an entire Scribner file that's just the same thing, just these one-liners of story ideas. <laughs> Concepts, just little bits of dialogue. Anyways, so please do comment down below. Let me know if you're like me. Do you have uh, just a file of little ideas, little nuggets? What tends to come to you first? Is it the character? Is there a quote? Is it a scene? Is it just a location? Let me know if you're someone who has a plethora of ideas or are you someone who sometimes worries when or where you're going to get your next story idea. And let me know what your favorite discovery has been on either like an old laptop or finding an old notebook and going through those stories. Are you someone who's actually revisited a very old story before? and made it better and are you able to see how much you have improved over time? Yeah. Also, finally, do you have a crutch name? <laughs> and is it James? <laughs> but that is gonna be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Tina Dawson, Vanilla Pudding, Georgia, Alexa Dunn, Magda, and Lauren Amanda. And I'll see you all very soon with a new video. Bye! <laughs> do, 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 do. So the Shadow Hunters was born. So that so the Shadow Hunters was born from this idea.